Hi folks, welcome back to the Village Clockmaker. I'm James. Tonight we're going to uh, rebush this clock plate uh, using the machine that I built to uh, rebush clock plates. Um, when you look at the uh, the plate and you put the wheel in like this, you can see this is supposed to be about side to side about four or five degrees which is that's a little worn right there but if you go this way look how bad that is so you know that that hole has become oblong let me turn it over you can see it better than that side you can see how oblong that hole is it's egg shaped and that will not do because that changes the depthing between that that wheel and its neighboring pinion and that's enough to stop the clock and usually the ones that wear the worst are the ones that closest to the mainspring because they take the most uh, pressure um, so we're going to uh, rebush that for you we're going to show you how you do it on this machine that I built oh. excuse my hand shaking but it's the only way I can do this um, this is a Delta 8 inch drill press, uh, cheapy. You can buy a win right now for uh, $89 online for this same one. And the difference between this and a standard one is that I modified it. I put, there you can see, I put a uh, speed reducer back there. There's the original motor and a connector there's the connector and now this spindle is running about 40 42 rpm instead of uh, the original which was oh, probably up in the hundreds so uh, then I made a set of drills and uh, brooches each one of these has a number. Uh, this one at this end is a number one, and then two, and then behind it, there's the drill in the front, and behind it is the bushing, or excuse me, the brooch for that particular one. Okay? So, when you find out, you hold on. So to find the proper bushing, you take this plate, which has all the available bushings in it, and you put your pinion, excuse me, you put your pivot in the hole, thusly, there we go, until you find the one you want. That's too small. There you go, that's about right. I like to make them a little tight because then I broach them out to, to make an exact fit. But that one's very, very close. And then you have three choices here, depending on the width of the or thickness of the plate. Uh, we're going to go with an L44-3. So now you go down into your drawer here and you find among all these bushings in these little boxes whoop we're missing that one well we can we have another box that we can use but anyway this is uh, this is L44-3 okay you get that bushing out which I'll get in a minute hold on so we found our bushing I knew I had another box of them and they're very small and they're very easy to lose. It's all the bigger it is. 
so I keep them in a little triangle tray just make sure I don't lose it. Now we're almost ready to bush but before we can do that we have to file this hole. This is the one we're working on and it's egg shaped. If I just put a drill in there and I drill that out it's not going to be centered where it was originally on the original hole it's um, it's going to be it's going to follow the worn hole so to make sure that that centers properly we have to take this uh, rat to a very small file and file out an even amount on the unworn side so that the worn side and the new side that we just filed are exactly the same distance. Now when we put our we drill that the drill will, will follow the center instead of on the side. Okay? That is absolutely necessary or you're going to end up with a hole off center and, or, and it won't uh, the, the depthing of the, of the wheel and the pinion is not going to be right. Okay, so we'll put this in here. I thought I had this. Now to make sure it's centered, we take our center that we made. Oh, that's going open. That's why I put that label up there. And I still do it wrong. Sorry my hands are shaking so bad, but that's what happens when you get old. Now we can lock this down like that. And we've got another one on this other side over here. It's not quite in the frame, but you get the idea. We're centered just exactly where we want to be and we can put in the drill take out the center now this is a number three so we want a number three drill we've got a foot pedal on this too so you don't have to turn it on and off we'll let him ring that's the answering machine. Let's see if we can get in a little closer. You see how that drill picked up the center of that hole right away. haven't moved it yet. We don't answer the phone rarely because almost all the time it's a telemarketer. <laughs> the minute you get in the yellow pages the telemarketers find you very quickly. Okay now we're going back. Here's our number three. machine makes the whole process so much faster and so much easier. Now we just have a pusher with a flat end on it. 
We've got a bunch of different sizes for different bushings. Now we're on the inside of this plate because you always put the bushing in from the inside. That brooch is tapered and uh, so is the bushing. And the oil hole on the bushing is on the outside so you, it, it goes in upside down. Okay? I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way here. Gee, hold on. Sorry about that. It was another customer. There's a saying among clockmakers that uh, life as a clockmaker could be quiet, contemplative, and richly rewarding if you could just figure out how not to have any customers. <laughs> They're wonderful because you couldn't do what you do without them. <laughs> but sometimes they they come at the wrong time. Okay, we're about to. Uh, now we don't, of course, don't use the don't use the uh, foot pedal now. Let's see if I can even get that a little closer, maybe. Yeah, there is pretty good. You can see that sitting there. And we'll just with this. We'll just press that in there like that. Whoops. And there we go. Now it's proud on this side because the there you can see it's a little proud right here. Okay. We got a way to fix that too. We'll take this out. We've got a lot of these are called stumps. <laughs> We've got a lot of stumps. We're gonna use the one with no with no hole in it. This is a carbide burr. Uh, got it on eBay. I don't know exactly where it came from, but they're all over eBay. Now we turn the plate over and we got this side. Now we've got, we've got our oil sink. Whoop. I'll figure this out eventually. We've got our oil sink right there. And that's that's uh, when you oil these, when you oil any clock, you most people over oil. They put way too much oil in. All you want to do is half fill that oil sink. Otherwise, uh, Surface tension, if you overfill it, the oil runs out, runs down the plate, and it drags all the other oil with it, and you end up with almost no oil in the, in the plate. So that's a bushing job. The only thing I have left to do now is um, smooth broach that out so that it's nice and 
nice and smooth and the pivot works beautifully. Let me try it again. There's our wheel and you can see, I hope, there we go. But now we've got, well we've only got one or two, it's not enough, but so this is too tight at this point, which is what I like to do. Let me get a brooch and we'll show you how you do that. Okay, we're back at the bench. There's two types of uh, brooches. These are brooches. One is a cutting brooch, like this. And you can see it has five flats on it. And this is a smooth brooch, which is just completely smooth. And we can make this hole just a little bit bigger by broaching it out like this. You want to broach from both sides because when the bush is all finished, it wants to have a high spot in the middle, which is what the pivot runs on. And the least amount of friction you can get, the better off you are. Okay, there you go. Four or five degrees, both directions, perfect. Now you want to smooth broach it just to clean it up. Make sure it's nice and smooth on the inside because everything causes friction. There you go. The perfect bushing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please subscribe and like and tell your friends if you think they might like this kind of work. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.